Hey everybody, it's Ed Zoller, Villa Realty Group with your end of August real estate market update. For those of you who do not know me, I've been a full-time real estate agent going on 24 years now. I am a market analyst. Uh, I've been doing this for a long, long time. Used to do this with dirt, done it with housing. I think it's more important now than ever with our market chaotically shifting and moving that we go over these things. I do not want this video to be uh, 25 minutes of me reading this PowerPoint to you. You can get all of this at Lee County Market Update. You can get every single month PowerPoint, uh, click it and uh, download it for free, or you can watch the video associated with it. But this video is all about me going over the graphs and ex explaining a few things about the market. So yeah, the big news, uh, Powell did uh, have a Jackson Hole meeting and uh, did discuss about the interest rates going down. We're going to discuss about that in a bit. So first, the supply of homes. And I got to have my laser pointer here. Um, Inventory went down negative well, 1.7% in the month of August, um, and our year-over-year -year inventory is 54% higher than last year, August. Uh, that's quite a difference. You can see that right here in the graph how much higher we are, but I want you to pay close attention to this. Look at when all of these years bottomed, September, and they go down about 3,000 homes, they go up 3,000 homes, they go down 3,000 homes. But isn't that funny how, except for COVID years right here, that every one of these starts at a certain month and finishes at a certain month, and that month is next month. So the end of September should be the lowest inventory. And if you notice here, from almost 10,000 down to a little under 7,000, almost 10,000 to 8,000, uh, 11,000 down to 8,000, a 3,000 home drop. Forget about COVID here, but look at this. We did not drop. We dropped a month after all of these went down and we're still at 9,100 homes. I mean, the highest we've had in the last three, four years is you know 11,000 homes. And if this goes up, if this bottoms, let's say bottoms out at 9,000 9, homes and goes up 3,000 homes, well, we're even off this graph. I'm gonna have to change the graphs up. We're gonna be over 12,000 homes and that's going to be really good for buyers, not so good for sellers. Um, again, normally we see this bottom in September and then inventory starts growing uh, back again uh, and going back up. And that is good for buyers. Demand. Now, long-term average, 1826. That's how many homes we sell in a month in Lake County. And as you can see here, there are years that we sold a lot more, especially the COVID years. But look at the peaks, the peaks going down. This one just hit long-term average, and that was supposed to be our peak for the year. Should have been up above that. But a couple things to notice here. September, in, remember, inventory goes up in September. But when does demand go up? Every single year, it's been January. It hits a low. Now, this January, we hit a 40-year low, and then it goes up, and then it plateaus and, and, and sharply goes back down again. Well, we're at 1,010. We're only like 70 homes away from being a 40-year low. So this is the second lowest we've ever been in 40 years. Uh, so something to take a note of that. So what, how do you pull this all together? Um, September inventory goes up. That's good for buyers. Demand doesn't go up till January. That's bad for buyers. So when's it good for buyers? September to January. Demand is continuing to go down. Inventory keeps growing. More choices, more competition. You get a better, um, you get a better deal. Um, so yeah, so overall sales did drop 4% month over month. Uh, and uh, as far as year over year drop, 36% drop in demand. This is not just local guys. This is national. This MBA, Mortgage Brokers Association, has an index that they uh, monitor and they analyze. Uh, this is how many mortgage applications are going out month by month. And as you can tell here, from our peak of COVID to now, 62% decrease of mortgage applications, and that's just from the middle of uh, 20, uh, 2020. So we are at what the index rating is 130 down from 140, 60% lower than COVID highs, and 35% lower than even before the pandemic. Even when the pandemic was at its worst and this huge drop off happened, we were still at like a 190 index. We're at a 130 right now. So for those of you thinking that it's um, it's just regional. It's just a Florida thing. No, it's a countrywide thing. Mortgage applications way down. Our average home price. So if the, oh, this demand going down, we would expect our home prices to go down. And I want to pinpoint something. So I'm going to go over it a little bit later. Why? Look at the last time we went up, exceeded over the long-term average, 
and we came crashing right back down again. Nice, slow and steady, little down, little up, but look how smooth that graph is. And then it plateaued, and then this is the real equity that sellers get once it kind of stabilized in, I think, 2016, 2015 or so, year over year, month over month, it was going up about three to 5%, which is what income was going up. As income goes up, people can afford more houses to go up. That's how it works. But then you see here with COVID, this huge skyrocket. And then this resistance, it went down, it went up, and it just did not want to go down. Uh, why? Why would this go down so fast and this didn't? It's what the builders were doing. Builders were keeping prices artificially inflated. Uh, and giving out incentives to make the monthly payment significantly lower, like they price dropped. To them, six half dozen, if it costs them 50 grand price drop or 50 grand worth of incentives, they would rather do that and keep their prices elevated. Um, so it doesn't last for long and it's not holding up or sustaining very well. Uh, but our average home price did go down negative 0.76%. We lost about three grand off the average home. Uh, and as you can see here, it is starting to escalate back down. This is the fake equity I'm telling you sellers out there that you did not deserve. I would say your real equity should be right around right here. High $200,000 range for the average home, mid to high. Instead, we're over three fifty, dollars uh, And that tells me that that's hundred grand that you're probably going to lose because you, your house never really truly earned it. It was just FOMO buying from investors and uh, people who are just running into houses uh, willy-nilly without thinking it over. So there's that. Uh, house payments as a percentage of income. Very important graph here. We take the average household income, which is 74,781. You divide that by 12. Then you add up what the mortgage payment is of the average home with the average interest rates of today with the average uh, insurance rate and taxes on that average home. And you come up with a ratio. How much of someone's gross income goes towards a mortgage? And you can see here, historically, it's all the way back in 2005. This is the long-term average. This is sustainable. 20% to 26% of a household's income is a sustainable thing. But, and obviously when it goes down, that's great. This is when the feds dropped the rate again in 2018 and it got a lot more affordable because prices of homes didn't quite go up with the impact that the interest rates going down did. But look what happened after COVID 2021. It went not only to affo barely affordable to not even close affordable. 40 something percent. We're at 41.12 percent. And last time we we're in the 40s, we all know what happened in 2007 and 8. A huge crash, an overcorrection, a stabilization, and then a dip, and then kaboom, off to the moon it went. So we have all of this. This whole gap right here, not sustainable. So we need a bunch of things to happen. The Fed's dropping a quarter point. Great, thanks. It gets us in the right direction. Will it make a big difference? The next graph you're going to see here, no, it's only going to change it from 41.1 to 40%. Still too high. It needs to be a combination of price decreases, insurance decrease, possibly tax decrease, and also um, uh, price decrease and interest rate increase. So uh, all the things that make up a mortgage, principal, interest, tax, insurance, all in combination are going to make our housing market back to a sustainable level. And uh, I did the math here. You can go over that. Uh, Lee County Market Update uh, uh, dot com. You can get this entire PowerPoint and you can read through all of this. But again, it only changes us to a 40.3 percent, a quarter points. Thanks, feds. But at the end of the day, it's not enough. We need a combination of things to happen. The home value growth month over month means that when a house goes up 3 percent a year, let's say it goes up 0.5 percent a month overall, this chart graphs out how much houses went up as a percentage. And the important thing to how to read this graph is when it's at zero, that's a stable market. When it's at 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that's a stable market. That's sustainable as long as income is going up that same rate. But when you see it go up to two something percent, that is not sustainable. And back in 2005 and six, it wasn't. And guess what happened? It dropped and it plummeted, and it overcorrected, then houses were losing 2% a month, and then it got back to stable about 2012, and then it kind of hovered around how income went up. And then look what happened with COVID, right back up again. So did we, is this a surprise that it crashed, overcorrected, and then is correcting again? No. 
Uh, we went down 0.76% like we talked about last time, but where does it show up on this graph? Well, it shows up getting further and further away from stable. You want to know if the market's stable? Look at this graph. Last time, we went 59 consecutive months of negative growth, and now we're at 13. When I started doing these updates, we were at one. <laughs> so now it's 13 consecutive months of negative home value, and it's getting further away from the graph of zero. Our price cuts got right back in tune with our long-term average. This is great. And a little bit of this is that sellers are listening to agents now. Agents are going to educate their sellers that, no, your house is not worth a half a million dollars more because there's FOMO buyers and a bunch of investors who aren't caring about what price they pay because of all the hype that was out there. No, now it's going to be, we have to market these homes. You got to get your sellers in check with what the market is. My sellers, I update them once every week now because the market's changing so fast. We don't want to have the market leave us. If the market goes down three grand or one grand a week, we need to adjust our price and get back to a re realistic price still command top dollar but not the the pie in the sky uh pricing that most sellers were trying to get last year so statistics let's just go month by month here uh housing for amount of houses for sale went down and the amount of solds went down uh the pendings went down that is future sales for next month if you see pendings drop then the sales next month are going to have to drop the new homes for sale look at that number that's like one out of five homes that we even have for sale in lee county are brand new builder construction models it's taking longer for them to sell uh the asking price went back to last month's as well as the selling price went back to last month's the percent of asking price is sold because the sellers are getting more in tune with where the market really is you're still going to see a high number here but it went down a little bit but uh, overall uh market buyers market 100 percent as you can see here in this graph the f more months of inventory we have uh the more of extreme buyers market it is the further you get from this line in either direction makes it more extreme we are in a chaotic market that's an extreme market right here slight buyers market slight sellers market oh my god sellers are in complete control and people are fomoing so you can see that happened from 2021 all the way to 2022 and then it started getting back into reality and now we're in this steep steep buyer's market with a ton of inventory more than nine months is not good because anytime national builder inventory or any uh, housing markets inventory gets past nine months guess what happens it goes over nine months Stagflation happened in 1973. The double dip recession happened in the 80 and 81. The 1990 recession happened. The Great Recession of 2006, it went above nine. Here it did it briefly. That was when our foreclosures started happening. And then COVID-19 recession and now. So what do we call now? We call now the present. But what am I going to call it? I don't know. It's going to be called something because every single time since 1963, it's gone above this line of nine months. It's been a recession. And the funny thing is these circles here, that triggered the recession. That was when the feds dropped rates to combat, to tighten their monetary policy and to combat inflation. And every time they drop rates, this has gone up. Guess what they just talked about this month? Dropping rates. <laughs> so kind of goes along with the par for the course. The builder, the reason you click this video, builder panic out there. Here's my proof of it. This is not just homes that are for sale. These are completed unsold homes that are CO'd, their houses, they're done, they can go. Builders usually get buyers to buy their homes while it's being constructed. So that by the time the house is done, the people close the same day. There's 102,000 homes that are ready to go that have not sold right now for sale. Last time we hit 102 on the way up, well, uh, this was uh, 1990. <laughs> uh, what was going on there? A recession. Uh, it went above and here. It went above here. This was our great recession. And we actually hit 199,000 completed homes. And it went back down, kind of hovered under that line. And then here we go, right back to 102,000. That is the largest amount we've had since 2009. But in 2009, it was on its way down. This is definitely on its way up. And last time it went up, it did shoot the moon. So builders are not happy with this at all. Let me show you three builders that are in Southwest Florida that are hating it right now and actually showing you real numbers. Here's a house. This was KB Homes. That is the, the nation's seventh largest builder from 491 to 437 that's a $54,000 price drop 
Adams Home, locally here in Cape Coral. They were at three ninety nine, dropped forty grand to three fifty nine. Imagine you're a buyer two months ago who just picked up that home for four hundred thousand dollars, and now they're selling the brand new version of your home two months later for three sixty. That's a forty thousand dollar price drop, and they're giving out flex cash, which is buy down interest rate money of another ten grand. So that is fifty thousand dollars there. And look at this, guys. Dear Horton's Nation's number one builder. They were originally at 492999 there's houses that went pending uh at 492999 there's houses that closed over 500,000 and now boom down to 470,000 but not on top of that they also are doing auto buy down about 7 grand of interest rates a 10 grand flex cash to buy it down even more to 4.99 and they're offering 15,000 in closing costs you add up all of that discount 20 here, um, 15 here, 10 here, another seven here. There's another more than $54,000 worth of incentives. But now we're finally seeing price drops. So builders are panicking. What does this mean to you as a buyer and seller? Here's my best advice I can give you. For buyers, patience, patience, patience. Just wait. Thank God you waited because... Could you imagine buying a home three months ago? Supply should start going up in September. The demand is going to be going down until January. So that is a good time for you to take a look at what kind of deal you can get. Um, and, and don't reach for falling daggers. Just be patient. Let the thing turn into a feather and fall gracefully into your hand. Command your price. Know what you want. Find what you want and give them an offer. And they're probably going to want to take it since they have way too much inventory. For sellers out there, we talked about the fake equity that uh, you're going to easily lose because you gained it artificially. Um, you just need to price yourself accordingly. And we are going to need unique marketing plans for every single house. There is a reason why I do sell more homes uh, and, and my listings do not sit any longer than 30, 60 days, well below the average. Uh, and I do move my houses. I think educating sellers is what I should be doing. Obviously, this is here out here to educate sellers as well as buyers to make the smart choices. It's not about buying a home or selling a home the quickest, fastest, or having anyone sell you a home. It's about making that decision, having a plan and sticking to it. Um, I'm going to break down another video. I'm going to break down a home analysis of that Dior Horton that they just dropped from 492 to 470. I'm going to make a separate video on that, but you guys can read through this. Uh, so overall, inventory is down, demand decreased, pending sales decreased. The home value growth year over year is getting further from stable. So we're less stable now than we were set, uh, 13 months ago. Unemployment ticked up to 4.3. There is a graph I have of this. I'm not going to go over uh, unemployment tick ups, but the year over year growth is important. When it goes above 12, there's only a few times in our nation's history that that kind of stuff happened. And it kind of goes along with those recessions I talked about. This last year over year growth of unemployment is 20%. And that's happened very, very few times. Uh, but definitely in the worst ones, the 2006, um, when you have that kind of year over year growth, usually there's a recession on it. And because there is some upside downness of recent seller uh, buyers who bought homes, let's say six months, a year ago, uh, we are seeing an uptick of list pendants, which is the first step of a foreclosure. So all my data is uh, everywhere you get this data. Guys, this is all uh, my breakdown analysis of data that I'm pulling up from all these sites. Uh, trust the data. There's no opinion to the data. You can interpret the way, the, the way you want. This is not a guarantee. Yes, Powell said he might or we're prone to it. He may not cut interest rates. Interest rates have been going down, by the way. The stock market's doing its own thing. This in no way is advice, uh, but this is my opinion on what I've learned over doing this for 24 years. So. You want to pull up your own data, come up with your own conclusions. I'd love to hear it in the comments. And if you guys have any questions, you can call me 239-980-2792. Uh, TeachersCanBuyHomes.com is your one-stop shop as for buyers out there because we got to come up with a plan for you as a buyer. Uh, so this is the first step for that. Uh, Lee County Market Update, you'll see all my update uh, PowerPoints. You'll see all my videos on that. And guys, I hope to hear from all of you. Please put in a comment down below what you think, what's your idea, what's your thoughts on what's going to happen with the market 
the real estate. And if you do have an area of the country you want me to look up and do something very similar on a private one-on-one -on -one thing where I can make it a video just for your area, I just need to know city, state, or county uh, state um, and what you want to. I just did one a couple months ago in Colorado. I did another one uh, in Parrish, Florida. Uh, again, just because I'm not from there or I've maybe never even been there, uh, all the data is, is very easily obtained by me and I can make up the graphs and do all that stuff fairly quickly. Love to send it out to you guys. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.